Hello, it's been a long time since I last recorded a video and quite a few people have been asking how I am and how my therapy's been going and in particular I've had a lot of questions about my EMDR therapy uh, and yeah people have been asking about whether I'd recommend it and that kind of thing and what is it so I thought I'd do a video about that today. I fear it might get a bit rambly so I'll try and keep it relatively short and if you've got other questions about it afterwards then let me know and I'll try and address those in a future video. So. So, okay, to start from the beginning, so I have a diagnosis of uh, CPTSD, which is Complex Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, and one of the NICE approved therapies for PTSD is EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing Therapy. Um, and I had read all about it a long time ago, but my therapist, who I've been seeing for a long time, like as in years, uh, wasn't trained in it, and I didn't want to start with any therapist, and also I thought EMDR sounded a little bit kind of witchcrafty uh, so it involves things like literally your therapist moving their fingers across like this and you're kind of following them with your eyes like this and I just I don't know it yeah didn't float my boat but you know time went on I was still really ill I was going in and out of uh, managing and not managing and nearly dying and uh, yeah in the end thought yeah let's give it a go and my therapist trained up in it so I have this year 2018 finally given EMDR a go and I'm a big fan so in the meantime I've learned loads about it if you want to learn about EMDR then and you're a geek like me I would recommend this book which is the kind of I don't know bible on it um it might not be for you it's really written for the clinician but I tend to read all their stuff as well as yeah, the patient stuff anyhow so the basic premise is that if you have post-traumatic stress disorder like me then you have a whole bunch of memories in your head which have not been appropriately processed and that means that you have things like flashbacks and anxiety attacks and things like that when you feel as if the thing which was a problem when the trauma happened whether it was one trauma or many traumas uh, is kind of happening again right now like you relive it you feel those feelings again you you, you re-experience it um, and, and it's really horrible um, I did a video a while back um, on a day when I was having a lot of flashbacks and um, yeah those of you who watched it saw how distressing it is to, to be going through that uh, for me my flashbacks can be quite like in my face and they can literally send me off course I'll be walking along and it's like being hit um, yeah it's it's tough so um, what happens with EMDR is you're essentially trying to reprocess those memories so you're kind of taking everything out the cupboard shaking it up in the right order and allowing your brain to, to kind of reformat them and then go okay that's a memory it's in the past um, so it, it kind of happens fairly quickly actually so a lot of the therapy I've done has been quite long term um, but with EMDR there's a bit of prep and then you do some sessions and it's quite intense and I think for some people it can be as few as like four or six sessions I'm still going maybe 12 or 14 sessions in um, but then I had quite a lot to untangle and undo and my trauma wasn't one incident it was a uh, many uh, but um, what happens is you work with your therapist first of all to like understand the nature of the trauma you don't have to go into it into too much detail if you don't want to um, and then you also learn about your kind of safety behaviors you learn that what you need to do in order to keep yourself safe during the sessions and beyond the session so one of the tricky things with it is that it's gonna like churn up some difficult thoughts and feelings and memories and you need to be able to keep yourself safe in between the sessions so one of the first things that I learned to do with my therapist for in EMDR was to create a safe space in my head and so for me um, that was um, involved my kids and it was a place that I could take myself to really easily I could think of being with them um, and I could imagine that and I practiced that a lot with my therapist um, and and that was kind of a really good grounding technique for me so if ever then things did become too much in a session or outside of the session then I've got a place I can kind of go back to um, so you learn you learn to do that and you also do lots of planning for what will happen like when you leave the session what happens if you get uh, flashbacks or kind of suicidal or self-harm ideation in between um, I yeah use a lot of my dialectical behavior therapy skills basically we drew on lots of other stuff because we knew this was going to be a bit of a tough time I didn't realise it was going to be quite as tough as it was though. So what happened was for me, and it'll be different for everyone, so you may remember this is one story, just my story. What happened for me was that literally in the first session of EMDR, it was like... Um, I don't know, like a, a dam got broken down. So I have lived my entire... I was going to say adult life, maybe life... Uh, very emotionally blunted so I found it very difficult to manage a lot of the stuff that happened to me and I guess one of my ways of dealing with that was just not to engage emotionally with anything and so um, yeah I lived everything with a big emotional buffer around me um, and 
for whatever reason, the EMDR very quickly was able to break those barriers down. Um, and it meant that I felt things a lot more intensely. Now, that was super tough because actually the the difficult feelings that I had were more intense than they had ever felt before I had feelings of sadness I hadn't had feelings of anger um, lots of very desperate difficult feelings that made it very hard to manage I mean I had to be really really careful in planning not to be alone and uh, I had to also specifically think about how to keep on top of my eating because uh, the anorexia was keen to flare back up um but on the other hand i also that same week for the first time experienced kind of really happy feelings and feelings of love um that i had never um experienced in quite that way before um i remember feeling really overwhelmed with kindness um of others at one point so one time in that week i went climbing as i do often i i, I went climbing because i just was really struggling to cope and i turned up at the climbing wall and our center manager gareth kind of you know basically took one look at me and he went I, I'm aware of what's going on I follow you on social media so you know do, do you want a cup of tea and a hug and um and he's like you're in your safe place now have a cup of tea calm down and then and then climb and uh and it was a really simple thing he did and a kind of thing he would do for anyone um and the kind of thing that other people have done for me before but that time it I don't know registered in a in a whole new way and yeah I was overwhelmed by that kindness um so yeah it was a week of that very first week in particular was a week of massive highs and massive massive lows um so then when I returned to my therapist I had to do a lot of planning around uh safety planning making sure that I carried on eating making sure that I didn't self-harm um that I wasn't at risk of suicide um because all those things felt like very very real possibilities again which was frustrating because I had got to quite a safe place um and I was managing okay and so this felt like a massive backward step but I was also able to see that clearly things were moving and that this would be difficult like really difficult in the short term but I had to work through it and that then things would begin to get better and, and weeks on now I'm able to say that that certainly was the case so in terms of like how it works in a session um w what happens is you you kind of you decide on a specific uh, traumatic memory, event, feeling that you're going to work through. And you think about how that makes you feel. You think about how it feels in your body um, and what uh, sort of negative self-beliefs that it, it brings to mind. So, for example, one of mine would be... Um, I was uh, raped and so it might be you know, bring to mind the most difficult part of that scenario and then you would think so what negative self-beliefs did I feel and, and for me I guess the, the most difficult ones there were that you know th this was my fault and I was I was weak uh, and I shouldn't have let it happen um, that I deserved it uh, you know there were lots of feelings that, that kind of went with that and and you do some kind of ranking exercises and you do some ranking exercises also around like how intense those feelings are then you also think about what you would like to believe about yourself rather so rather than the beliefs you have you think about what you'd want to believe um, so in in my instance you know I, I was a child um, I was o overpowered um, so I was 14 and the person who raped me was 19 and physically much stronger than me I was an anorexic 14 year Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Anyway, I don't, I'm not going to sit and justify it. Uh, I was yeah. It wasn't my fault. That was something I needed to, to be able to believe. And there are a series of others. Um, and so then what you do is you go through the very strange um, reprocessing process. I, I find it very strange. There's different ways you can do it. So I think for some people they do tapping. For some people they use a light bar. Uh, my therapist has one now that I I prefer the way we learned, which was just literally following his eyes. And so literally what happens then is he will sit there and he will make my eyes follow his fingers as I do this. And this triggers um, REM sleep type movement with your eyes um, and kind of triggers the reprocessing uh, process. Um, and you basically, you sit and you do that and you allow the thoughts that need to come to come. And um, it can go off in any direction. And sometimes it's um, it's quite a clear narrative. Sometimes it's other, you know, can be can go off in all sorts of strange direction. But you just sort of let it happen. Um, and every now and then, the therapist checks in with you and says, "What what are you getting now? What are you feeling? Um, what's happening?" Um, and you, I think the idea is that you communicate back. In my case, I tend to get so distressed when I'm caught up in these memories that um, I'm not really able to communicate much at all. Sometimes I. I cry every now and then there's a moment of respite and I can say something like it's getting better or something but but often it's just very hard the, the good thing about this therapy is you you don't have to actually 
say and it's not really about what you're saying it's about what's happening in your mind so the thing that my therapist will always remind me is this is all old stuff it can't hurt you now you're safe and if we need to we return to my safe space um but the ideal is that you just keep driving through so i think of it um like when you're driving your car on the motorway when it's raining really really heavily um and you feel like you want to pull off onto the hard shoulder um but actually you know that it's raining so hard that somebody might career into you and actually you're safer just really holding your nerve following the tail lights in front of you and just driving on through until the rain passes and it's the same with these really difficult thoughts and feelings and memories in the EMDR you just keep going you just keep going you just keep going and it usually does after a while you begin to come to a place of, of safety and and the, and the memories become more easy to manage um, I don't know how that works for other people for me what normally happens is that when I start a session then I'm very much on my own in a very difficult and dark place and as I work through the session then I tend to find that I've got people with me my children my husband my best friend uh, other, other people might be there too uh, and I realise that I'm not alone anymore and I'm not helpless um, and that tends to be how that process goes um, yeah so it's been different for different things I mean I've had a lot of different uh, traumas that I needed to work through some which were more sort of generic around sort of um, uh, neglect and ongoing abuse uh, whereas others were about specific incidents um, and yeah those were processed differently um, there's still some more work to do on some of them so it's not like you do a memory once and then it's it's done um, you sometimes need to revisit and revisit and how much you do that is kind of up to you and your therapist um, but for me it's been good I mean yeah I now feel like I still get some flashbacks um, and I still have days which are really tough um, but actually those days are getting fewer and, and less yeah fewer and further in between and I'm having uh, less uh, night terrors uh, my life isn't dominated by the PTSD now which it, it really was even though life felt like it was much better before I started the therapy um, actually life was very much dominated by by the PTSD um, and I yeah I feel like I'm getting control of that now and that there is a way forward I think it will always need active management um, but yeah it's been yeah two or three months of a really really tough therapy uh, with really careful planning in between um, but it's making a huge difference I think for me one of the biggest differences has been that um, so uh, part of it's about being able to have a better understanding of some of the things that happen so I struggle with um, dissociation and uh, so that's kind of kind of absenting myself almost like l literally when things are very difficult so uh, that's something that happens often to people who've experienced trauma from a very young age so it can happen to me still now very occasionally um, but I had that issue like the night of my rape I, I, I had had lots of flashbacks but I'd never really been able to piece it all together um, and actually through this process um, I have been able to put together a clear narrative of, of how it worked and I never knew that I had the whole story in my head although it all made sense once I put it together what I don't know is how much of that is about me actually remembering and how much of it is about my brain trying to make sense of something and filling in the gaps um, but it it doesn't actually matter because what I end up with is something which is kind of more tangible more dealable with um, and actually something I can talk about without crying and breaking down and you know I, I can talk about it I, I yeah I can yeah yeah the fact I can sit and yeah say out loud so I kind of say it on Twitter sometimes but I don't often yeah out loud talk about the fact that yeah I was right uh, I'm not able to deal with a lot of the other stuff that came out of that yet that's you know for another time but anyway progress so I did say this might get rambly I fear it has there's a bit about my experience with the MDR as I say it's just my experience so today I'm sharing as um, yeah personal as a person a personal experience rather than as a professional um, I would suggest that if EMDR has been suggested to you as a therapy to think really carefully about it um, I found it to be very positive very powerful but I have found it that during the initial period at least I had to um, plan very carefully I needed to really not be working um, but to have a very clear timetable so that I wasn't alone make sure my eating was all fully supported um, I lent more heavily on my medication than I had done previously um, and I had to have very very clearly timetabled uh, times to enable me to, to manage so my climbing my walking my piano playing my singing all those things became um, even more important than they had been before and obviously having supportive people on the end of the phone uh, yeah just having that support in place was key but yeah I, I definitely would 
do it again uh, and, and I'm continuing to, to work through it so grateful to my therapist for training up and um, yeah grateful for the chance to finally tackle some of this stuff so yeah there you go uh, EMDR my experience of EMDR mm. yeah any questions if there's stuff I haven't answered because like I mean it's a massive topic then do feel free to uh, leave them below and I'm sorry I don't respond to all the comments that come in on my videos it's just because there's so many of them um, uh, especially on some of the videos and, and so I'm not always able to but if you have specific questions about EMDR then post them on this video then I will uh, respond to those or else tweet me at Pookie H um, yeah cool and yeah anyone else who's kind of going through the same thing then good luck uh, keep going and just remember like the car driving through the rain just keep going keep going keep going keep following those tail lights ahead of you uh, and, and you'll get there um, I, I heard a lovely quote the other day, uh, Wendy Mitchell, who wrote a beautiful book about early onset dementia called Somebody I Used to Know, um, she talked about how um, when when you're struggling in like fog or in my case like very very heavy rain um when you're driving it's much easier and you feel much safer when you've got the tail lights of someone in front of you to follow and she kind of felt that she was able to be those tail lights to other people because she was sharing her story of early onset dementia so uh yeah i guess i want to kind of yeah borrow that and hey maybe i can be your tail lights if you're thinking about um going through this similar kind of therapy um yeah so it, it's tough but it's totally worth it okay okay see you next time bye